Hi there, we're here at Davis Media Access with another episode of The City Considers. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, and I'm your host for this show, which we record once a month to find out what's going on with our city council and what issues they are considering. So today we're talking about cannabis in Davis. After the passage of Prop 64 last November in California, cities were suddenly challenged with a slew, developing a slew of regulations on everything from land use policy to licensing and production. There's been a lot going on. It's a very complex complicated issue and here to discuss today is Davis City Council member Will Arnold. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Autumn. It's a pleasure to be here. So every time I talk to someone from the council, what I hear is I never realized how complicated this was. And it, it crosses sure. lines of business, personal use, sure. taxation, I mean just everything. Yeah, uh, we are learning uh, very quickly. It's a steep learning curve and the, uh, the state regulations are uh, are continue to be in flux. So uh, as we learn, uh, there's new information every day. Right. So I know that uh, you were mentioning Davis has a long time ban on dispensaries, Correct. marijuana dis dispensaries. But in May, the council approved 5-0, um, the, the licensing for some production facilities in Davis. Can we talk about that for a minute? Sure. So, uh, so in 1996, more than 20 years ago, the state of California passed uh, legalization of cannabis for medical use. Right. But still, uh, the city of Davis has a blanket ban on dispensaries. And as you mentioned up until recently, it was a blanket ban on any uh, commercial use of cannabis. Right. Right. Uh, and um, there were some actions taken uh, last year before I was on the council. Uh, one was to allow for personal in-home cultivation or mm -hmm. growing of, of cannabis for personal medical use. And then was what was put on the ballot last year was a measure uh, in anticipation of the voters in November passing personal use, right. adult use of cannabis, uh, a measure to pass a tax in Davis. And so um, the voters of Davis in 2016 actually had two opportunities to vote on cannabis-related ballot measures. Right. Uh, the one I mentioned in June, which was a tax measure, and it passed in the city with more than 78 percent of the vote. And that's Measure C. And that's Measure C. Right. And then, of course, in November, Prop 64, the Adult Use of Marijuana Act, um, passed statewide right. and passed in the city of Davis with about 68 percent of the vote. Right. And just to, to be clear as we move forward, there's medical marijuana and then there's Correct. what was approved for recreational use. Correct. And that's what we're focusing on today is the, the, the rulings that have come about primarily related to the passage of Prop 64. Correct. Yeah. And so, so since November, the, the city has taken up uh, a number of, of issues regarding the, the legalization of cannabis. Uh, we uh, allowed for uh, outdoor growing for personal use. And that was huge. For individuals. That's few places have done that. Very few places yeah. have done that. Um, we uh, just recently uh, passed uh, um, an ordinance allowing for uh, certain types of businesses, uh, specifically not retail businesses. So these would be production type businesses like right. uh, manufacturing, distribution, research and development and testing. And uh, the idea is that uh, this may be a, a very good fit for the city of Davis mm -hmm. with our history and, and propensity for agricultural research. And the idea being that those are um, sort of out on the Mace Ranch curve area, the outside of business. Sure, or, business or park. down on Second Street. I mean, they'll, they'll yeah. most likely be in, in industrial type settings. Right. And uh, part of the reason why we took that up um, more quickly than we have the the dispensary issue is because of a belief that I share that these will have uh, insignificant um, community impact. Right. I mean, you you won't see it, or you'll see it as a warehouse, and you won't quite know what's going on there. We're not dealing with a lot of foot traffic. We're not traffic. dealing with foot traffic yeah. or anything where uh, folks are coming in and buying something. I mean, that's a it, it's just not visible. Right. What's the tenor around all of this in the community? I know there have been some public forums, uh, Davis Media Access recorded one or two of them. Right. Uh, what are you hearing from the community? You, 
Everything thus far has been overwhelmingly positive. I mentioned the two elections that right. that were held in 2016. Those are about as official as it gets yeah, as a, as a poll, and both, like I said, passed overwhelmingly. Um, there's also been a number of unofficial polls through different uh, media sources like the City of Davis's website, uh, the social media next door. All of those were taken and were also overwhelmingly in favor of legalization. Right. And then we've had a number of forums, uh, at, at which point the um, folks who came were able to render their opinion. And there were, I wouldn't exactly call them votes, but there was uh, opinions were sort of put on a spectrum. Sure. And it was uh, pretty heavily in favor of, of the city moving toward decriminalization. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, when you walked in that there was a, a meeting just last night. Right. Where are we headed next with all of this? So we took up three distinct issues last night. The first was uh, to create uh, the municipal code uh, governing our policy regarding cannabis because, as we mentioned, thus far the city of Davis has had a blanket ban. So. Right. Other than stating that in our municipal code, there wasn't much nuance there. So we created the code, which which uh, included such things as licensing and other regulations relating to uh, to business uses of cannabis. Right. Uh, we also took up the the issue of taxation. Uh, the the measure that the voters passed last year uh, allowed for up to 10% mm -hmm. uh, uh, of gross receipts to be taxed. Um, but we, you can, you can set different rates for different types of businesses, okay. and so we set different rates last night. And then, critically, uh, the third piece that we took up last night was the very beginning of the discussion at the city council level as to what to do about dispensaries. And that's, that's been the hot issue. And that is the hot issue, because yeah. that's where the rub rubber meets the road. That's where uh, most folks are going to see it. And um, those who will are going to interact with it. Right. And that's where, they're, that's where um, most folks, when they think about you know, legalizing commercial use and commercial activities regarding cannabis, that's what they think of as a dispensary. Right. So is there friction? Are there opposing viewpoints there? Those who want it? A dispensary downtown, for example, those who don't. Sure. Um, so uh, we did not receive any public comment last night in opposition to yeah, either in general or specifically, um, nor have we received any you know, emails or phone calls or anything, at least I haven't, uh, of folks who were opposed. Yeah. And, and, and I don't think we've been doing this uh, in, the, uh, in the cover of darkness. No, no, it's this pretty well been, out there. This has been pretty um, well reported on by, yeah. by you, by other media in town. Uh, for months, if not more, yeah. and so it's. I, I don't think anyone's surprised by what's going on. And and like I said, the response thus far has been positive. In fact, uh, I've been, I must say, pretty surprised by that. So, based on what you're saying, is it likely we will see dispensaries greenlighted as we move ahead? So, uh, in the meeting last night, staff recommended uh, that uh, that we do allow for a small number of brick and mortar dispensaries. Mm -hmm. uh, the number that was recommended by our staff was four. And in the discussion last night, uh, there was not a sense that anyone on the council wanted that number to be zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then there's, uh, so, so to answer your question, I think by a year from now, there will likely be at least one cannabis dispensary in operation in the city of Davis. Hmm. So now I'm also talking, you're not only a council member, but you're a business owner, mother right. and baby source downtown right. with your wife, Nicole. So thinking uh, of it, of this issue through that lens, what kind of financial benefits in terms of taxation? So what impact would Measure C have on generating revenue for the city? So uh, what we decided last night regarding taxation is to tax uh, dispensaries at that full 10%. Okay. Uh, th that is in addition to our eight and a quarter percent sales tax. That is uh, in addition to statewide taxes that are are levied specific to cannabis businesses. So the number that's out there uh, for the true tax number 
for these businesses is somewhere in the neighborhood of one third, 33 percent is, is the tax. So the city potentially could, um, could we won't be seeing all of that certainly, much yeah. of that is, is statewide, but, uh, but we could potentially see a lot in the, in the way of uh, tax revenue from this industry. And I sort of anticipated that answer ab about how, how you uh, broke out the taxes because any substance that's been legalized and in there is therefore regulated has a lot, as we know, cigarettes, alcohol sure. has, has a lot exactly. of taxes. Yeah. So, um, so someone has to be pretty motivated, but there's also probably a, a, a pretty substantial profit margin for coming in and being certainly the first dispensary, right. that, you know, to break that ground in Davis. Yeah. So I said we didn't have any public comment opposed last night. That's not to say we didn't have any public comment. And there were a number of folks in the audience last night who are either advocates or in the industry. So right. these are these are folks that own businesses elsewhere who want to open up shop in Davis, sure. uh, both uh, folks who do the research development production side, right. uh, as well as uh, people who are interested in opening up dispensaries. Some of these are local folks mm -hmm. who, um, who don't obviously currently operate a dispensary, but who are uh, intrigued by the uh, opportunity, right. but also a number of regional uh, dispensary operators from Sacramento and elsewhere who are interested in expanding into Davis. Great. So what comes next at the council level? So this, uh, this dispensary discussion is, is going to be uh, on the front burner for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a number of issues to discuss. We, we really only kicked it off last night. There was no official um, decision made last night with regard to dispensaries, and that was not, it was not on the agenda for us to make any sure. decisions. This was just the beginning of a long conversation. Uh, but we need to decide certainly uh, how many we think uh, are appropriate in, in the, the city, mm -hmm. where, and, mm -hmm. and if not specifically where, then uh, under what um, type of zoning and what type of other considerations uh, regarding geography are made. For right. example, the state uh, recommends a 600 foot uh, barrier between any school uh, to a dispensary. So yeah. that's something that we're obviously taken under consideration. And so there's a map that the city has produced that, that sort of shows what those borders look like. And right. so where then our options would be to open up this type of business. And then critically, and possibly what would be, what will be the most, um, I'm not sure contentious is the right word, but uh, because there are a great number of interested parties in opening up a dispensary, and because we plan to limit the number, at least at first, that we allow to open, mm -hmm. there will be a pretty, um, healthy competition. Almost like an RFP process. Uh, almost like an RFP yeah. process. In fact, that was one of the options that right. was in front of us last night was to do an RFP process. There's also sort of an, an open period where folks can apply. And of course, we dig much deeper than that as to what are the criteria, what information are we asking right. from folks, what 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 level of investment do they need to have already made? For example, do they already need to have a location secured? Right. Uh, things like that. Um, so these are all issues of continued discussion, and we only scratched the surface of them last night. Great. Well, will you come back and update us in a couple of months and let us know how things are going? Certainly. All right. Yeah. Our time is actually up, so I'm going to wrap up. I want to thank uh, Council Member Will Arnold for coming in and joining us today. We've been chatting about the ever-changing rules and regulations related to cannabis in Davis. And I can only say, I mean, the ship has clearly sailed on this issue. We're seeing state after state right. begin, begin to legalize. So um, Davis, in true form, is kind of out there and, and developing unique policies. We go along. Thanks for your work on this. It's my pleasure, and thank you for having me tonight. My pleasure. So you can find out more about uh, the City Council upcoming agendas and long-range planning at cityofdavis.org. There's a section there for the City Council. And you can also watch council members, uh, council meetings live on the Tuesdays when they meet on uh, Comcast ch uh, uh, Channel 16 here in Davis, which is run by the city of Davis. I'm Autumn Labbe-Renault, and thanks for tuning in.